This film leads us through biblical and modern Israel and Rome. We see scenes from the life of Jesus of Nazareth and his disciple Peter from Capernaum. One of the basic events of the history of God with his people Israel is the fact that the people of Israel were liberated from the house of bondage Egypt and ushered in the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey. In today's Israel, Tel Aviv is located on the Mediterranean and is the second largest city of the country, following Jerusalem. Israel has approximately 8 million residents, about 75% being Jewish and 21% Arabic. Israel is the only country in the world in which Jews are in the majority. It was founded in order to offer Jews from all over the world a homeland where they will be protected from persecution. We drive from Tel Aviv inland. Jerusalem is located in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea and has at present about 800,000 inhabitants. Jerusalem has played an outstanding role in the religious awareness of the Jewish people from time immemorial. This is based on the biblical traditions of King David, who determined Jerusalem as the capital of his empire, as well as the West Wall as the only remnant of the Herodian Temple. Underway to the Church of the Nativity of Jesus in Bethlehem, we pass through a border control of the Palestinian territory. The Israeli barrier separates with an up to 8 meter high wall Bethlehem from Jerusalem. Bethlehem, with its 30,000 residents, is situated in West Jordan land. The city is of special interest for more than 2.2 billion Christians, as it is said to be the birthplace of Jesus Christ. The Church of the Nativity is located in Bethlehem, on the site where Jesus is assumed to have been born. The church is one of the few intact buildings still existing from the time of the early Christians. To the left, adjoining the Church of the Nativity, is the newly erected Catherine Church, built by Franciscan monks in 1881. The church was restored prior to the Pope's visit in the anniversary year 2000. The room behind the main altar was enlarged at this time.
in the Church of the Nativity, religious services are held in the Greek Orthodox tradition. Saint Hieronymus traveled to Bethlehem in the year 386. It is there that he finished his Latin translation of the Bible. In his extensive work he repeatedly reports of the Grotto of the Nativity. In his 46th letter he wrote, Here, in a narrow crevice, the Creator of Heaven was born. The Church of the Nativity is the oldest preserved church in continuous use in the Holy Land. In 2012 it was added to the list of the UNESCO Cultural World Heritage. A 14-pointed silver star marking the place of Jesus' birth can be found under the Nativity Altar. The Church of the Nativity was commissioned in 333 by Emperor Constantine. This site was honored as Jesus' place of birth as early as the second century and continues to be an important place of pilgrimage for believers from all over the world. As Matthew and Luke report in the Bible, Jesus was born in a stable. A heavenly vision appeared to the shepherds in their fields, announcing the birth of the Messiah. Ceremonies are regularly held near the Grotto of the Nativity. Afterwards, one can approach the site. Sea of Galilee is situated in northern Israel in the upper Jordan Valley, 21 kilometers long and 13 kilometers at its widest point. The lake lies 212 meters below sea level, making it the lowest freshwater lake in the world. 
replicas of historical ships are allowed to sail the lake. A number of small towns dot the shoreline, including Capernaum, where Jesus lived and worked. This is where Jesus walked on water, stopped a horrifying tempest, fed 5,000 people from five loaves of bread and two fish, and changed water into wine. This is also where Jesus met Peter, who was a fisher on Sea of Galilee, and later became a close disciple of Jesus. Jesus said to him, You are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. Today there stands an octagonal church in Cape Enorm, named the House of Peter. Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel, is considered sacred to Christians, Jews and Muslims. From the Mount of Olives one has a beautiful view of the city, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Dome of the Rock is the oldest sacred building of Islam and one of the main Islamic shrines. It is a masterpiece of Islamic architecture and the best known landmark in present Jerusalem. Poetic and religious titles, such as the biblical name Zion or the Holy City, designate Jerusalem as the home of the one God which both Jews and Christians honor. At the foot of the Mount of Olives lies the Garden of Gethsemane. According to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, this is the place where Jesus prayed the night before his crucifixion, before being betrayed by Judas Iscariot and arrested by the emissaries of the High Priest. Getsmain is Greek and means olive press. This area has been covered with olive trees since biblical times. Next to the Garden of Gethsemane stands the Church of All Nations. It owes its name to the fact that its construction was made possible through donations received from all parts of the world. The building is also meant as a reminder of the moment when Jesus became aware of his forthcoming suffering caused by his betrayal. The building is therefore known as the Basilica of Agony.
The Christ's Way of the Cross, the Via Dolorosa, begins a few hundred meters behind the Lion's Gate, just north of the Temple Mount. According to legend, the Via Dolorosa was once the street leading from the Roman administration building of Governor Pontius Pilate to the place of execution on Mount Golgotha. This was the route Jesus followed to his crucifixion, while having to carry his cross most of the way. For that reason, the street is called the Stations of the Cross. chapels of the condemnation and flagellation. Both of these Franciscan chapels stand in part on the Lethostrotos, the Roman cobblestones, where Jesus was condemned to death. Triumph Arc, located in the Ecce Homo Basilica. Tradition names it as the place where Pilate presented Jesus to the people. One often encounters pilgrims along the way, who empathize with the way of the cross. According to tradition, Maria stood along the way to see her son. Her pain and sorrow are commemorated in this small Armenian Catholic chapel.
fifth station is indicated by an oratory of the Franciscans, at the point where the Via Dolorosa leads up in steps to Golgotha's side. Catholic church was erected where once stood the house of Veronica. According to legend, Veronica offered Jesus her veil as he passed in order to wipe the blood and sweat from his face. A miracle occurred and his face was imprinted on the cloth, later known as the Veronica image. designates the second fall of Jesus, just as he was about to leave the city through a gate. According to tradition, his sentence of death was posted here. The eighth station is marked by a Latin cross, engraved in the wall of the Greek monastery. Not far from this point one finds the apse and roof of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It is a reminder that Jesus collapsed at the side of his place of crucifixion. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre stands on the traditional site of the crucifixion and tomb of Jesus. The church complex is one of the largest sanctuaries of Christianity and includes the location of the tomb and the nearby hill of Golgotha.
steps lead up in the chapel of the denudation of Jesus. most important holy place for the Latin Christians. This is the place where Jesus was nailed on the cross under the eyes of his mother. The Greek altar, in Eastern style, rises above the rock of Calvary, over the place where the crosses of Jesus and the two criminals stood. of anointing where the body of Jesus was laid. Holiest place in Christianity, the shrine of Jesus' burial and resurrection is located in a chapel built exclusively for this shrine and is the center point of the sepulchre church.
Jerusalem, the Jews are the most important religious grouping. Christians consider Jerusalem to be sacred, as it is the place of Jesus' suffering, crucifixion and resurrection. Jerusalem is mentioned more than 100 times in the New Testament. The history of the city dates back to the early centuries of Christianity. The archaeological park is located next to the western wall. Here are numerous remains of the second Jewish temple, as well as excavations of other epochs of the holy city. The western wall is located in Jerusalem's old town. It is a Jewish religious site and is said to be the west wall of the second Jerusalem temple, once located on this plateau. Jews refer to the Wailing Wall as the Western Wall, as it is believed to be the west wall of the temple, and not primarily a place of lamentation. This place is visited daily by many people who come to pray. Many place prayers, wishes and words of gratitude written on small pieces of paper in the fissures and cracks of the wall. For many Jews, the wall is a symbol of the eternally existing bond between God and his people. Today, a bar mitzvah celebration takes place for a large number of young men who have, at the age of 13, reached religious maturity. In an area next to the western wall, Believers are immersed in their studies of the Holy Scriptures. The dialogue with God and devotion to faith give many people the strength to deal with life and to forgive. Yeah.
Rome is the capital city of Italy, and with its three million residents, its largest city as well. It lies in the region of Lazio, on the banks of the Tiber River. Rome was first referred to as the Eternal City in the first century AD by the Roman author Tibullus. This title has become the honorary name of the city due to the importance of a 3,000-year history. The Forum Romanum is the oldest Roman forum and was the center of political, commercial, cultural and religious life. It lies in a hollow between three hills, the capital, Palatine and Esquiline, and was the site of many public buildings and memorials. Today the Forum Romanum is one of the most important antique Roman archaeological sites in the world. The Colosseum is the largest amphitheatre built in antique Rome as well as being the largest closed construction of the time and is today the largest amphitheater worldwide. Built between 72 and 80 AD, it is the landmark of Rome and witness to the high quality of ancient Roman architecture. Upon completion in 80 AD, the Colosseum was inaugurated with games for a period of 100 days. The spectacle included gladiator fights, simulated naval battles and bloody animal baiting, resulting in the death of 5,000 animals in the arena. Vatican City, a sovereign enclave within Rome, is the seat of the Roman Catholic Church and home to its leader, the Pope. Rome is also rich in important buildings and museums. The Old City, St. Peter's Basilica and the Vatican City were declared World Heritage Sites by the UNESCO in 1980. The Via Appia in Rome begins at the Porta Capanna. Construction of the street leading to Brindisi, 300 miles away, was begun by Appius Claudius Sicus in 312 BC. It was finished in 190 BC. Most of the early popes and many mitres have found their final resting place on the Via Appia. The chapel Santa Maria in Palmas was erected at the beginning of the Via Appia. It was built in the 9th century to mark the place where Jesus appeared to Peter as he was fleeing Rome. 
Within the church lies a copy of the stone supposedly containing the footprints of Jesus. Therefore the name in palmis, from the Latin word palma, meaning foot's surface. According to legend, Christ appeared here in a vision to the Apostle Peter. When asked, Domine quo vadis, where are you going, my Lord? Jesus' apparition answered, I am going to Rome, to be crucified a second time. Peter thus returned to Rome, to begin his martyrdom. The church, San Pietro in Vincoli, Peter in Chains, is located on Ascaline Hill, near the Colosseum. The cornerstone was laid in 431 AD. Eight years later, San Pietro was consecrated by Pope Sixtus III. The church received its name from the chains kept in a glass container under the altar. They are revered by pilgrims as being the chains worn by Peter in Jerusalem until his miraculous liberation. the Pope nearly every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. on St. Peter's Place. The weekly audience was implemented by Pope Pius XI in the Holy Year 1925. The number of those attending has tripled since the pontificate of Pope Franciscus began. Prior to the audience event, cardinals preach in different languages to the pilgrims and guests from around the world. A highlight of the ceremony is the Pope's greeting prior to the audience. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Not only have these words determined Apostle Peter a special saint, he is also considered to be the founder and head of the church in Rome. According to Catholicism, Peter is Christ's representative on earth, and as the first bishop of Rome, leader of all local bishops, the papal office therefore 
derives from him. The numerous denominations or churches within Christianity can be divided into four main groups. The Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, the Protestant Church and the Anglican Church. Christianity, with its 2.2 billion members, is the world's widest spread religion, followed by Islam and Hinduism. Many churches maintain more or less relaxed affiliations with other churches mutually respecting their common teachings, without giving up their specific rites and rituals. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest papal basilica in Rome and is the center of the sovereign state of Vatican City. The dome can accommodate 20,000 people. With an underroof area of 15,000 square meters, it is the largest church in the world. The preceding building, named Old St. Peter, was built in 324 as a sepulchre church by Constantine the Great over what is presumed to be the grave of the Apostle Simon Peter for whom the church is consecrated. The expansively conceived St. Peter's Basilica encompasses many places of worship where groups of pilgrims can attend services in many different languages. The statue of Peter is located in the main nave. The right foot has become worn down through years of stroking, which is considered to bring blessings. The Pope's altar with its bronze canopy, is located underneath the cupola. It was erected between 1624 and 1633 above the Confessio, which, according to legend, is the grave of Saint Peter. We delve once again into the history of this sacred site. Jesus spoke here to his disciple Peter about the importance of his succession. The warm affection I received from the Apostles, especially Peter, filled my heart with joy. Greater than all others, he was inflamed with love for me. I asked him therefore whether or not he loved me above all other apostles. He declared his enormous love for me. I presented him this question three times in order to test the reliability of his answer. After each answer I commanded him to feed my sheep. As a result I named him the head of my church. I requested this evolval of love in order to make clear that I would demand ever greater love from him, as I had determined him to be the head of all others. Thus he could fulfill his duties in glorification and honor to the Heavenly Father and strive for the healing of the souls committed to him. Peter, enlightened from our Father, recognized the sublimity of his office. He humbled himself as he thought himself to be unworthy. He accepted the office only to fulfill God's will. 
all other apostles were filled with joy, thereby fulfilling the commandment of brotherly love which I had placed upon them. They were filled with joy over the advancement of their brother and companion, thus showing themselves willing to be subservient. In accordance with the promise I had made my apostles, I will be present in the form of bread and wine in the sacrament of the altar until the end of time. To my great joy, as well as the joy of my Heavenly Father, I reside in this sacrament and thus assuage my love for all mankind. My love for my Father remains unbroken in the sacrament on the altar. I bring him this love as compensation for the love and homage of him by mankind. I also offer him my virtue and perfection in place of their faults. And so his desire that all people should be perfect shall be stilled. It is with great joy that I look upon the souls who love me and lay their homage before the tabernacle. When they open their hearts to me and reveal their secrets, I shower them with gifts of grace. I linger in the sacrament of the altar in order to hear all pleas and grant them mercies, thus healing their souls. I strike down the infernal enemies who seduce mankind into immoral ways of life. In the sacrament of the altar, I am food and drink for all souls and nourish them with heavenly joy and cause them to feel disgust for all worldly pleasures. I teach lovingly all those souls that receive me in a dignified manner. I am healer and medicine, strength and comfort. I am the light, the way, the truth and the life. I am advisor, leader and shepherd, brother and loyal friend and the giver of all graces. In fact, I effect in this sacrament the everlasting blessing of all mankind. I do all this with the greatest joy and in love to all people for whom I died on the cross and to whom I have given this nourishment as sacrament.